right now. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, that you are the God that answers all of our prayers. God, you have heard all our concerns, and God, you're so ever careful even now to lean into your children and to assist us through this trying time. God, we love you now. God, we are praising you now, and we're worshiping you now with our whole being. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we're grateful for all that you're doing and all that you're going to continue to do in Jesus' name name. Amen and amen. Welcome to Liberation Church Online today. Uh, thank all of you for tuning in from all over the world, from wherever you're watching from. Uh, do me a favor real quick. I want you to say hello. Uh, type in the comments your name and where you're watching from. And don't forget, hashtag Liberation Nation. That's right, Liberation Nation. Amen. And so today we're going to have our online worship experience. I'm telling you, I am uh, just excited about this word. The only thing uh, that I'm a little nervous about is I don't know if I can get through it in the time that I have. Uh, God is speaking to me all through the night and just really just... Um, giving me a word for his people. And so I am extremely, again, excited and humbled that you have chosen to watch us today for whatever reason, whether you follow us on, on social media, whether a friend or a coworker shared the broadcast, or maybe uh, somebody just directly invited you to watch today. However you ended up on this broadcast, maybe you were just scrolling through Facebook and just stumbled in. Well, guess what? This is by God's design. This is not by accident. You did not come on by accident, but this word is specifically for you. I ask you, I beseech you, I beg you, Give the next 30 minutes of your undivided attention to what the Lord has to say. And I believe that he's going to give clarity, he's going to give understanding, and he's going to give you a sure word for where you are in your life right now. Now, if you're with us for the first time, you'll notice in the comments section uh, that we have pinned a link. We've pinned the link in our Facebook page and what you can do is you can just click on that link and let us know that you are a first time guest. If you want to learn more about our ministry, you can go in and fill out that form and we will be sure to keep in contact with you. You also can go to our website at liberationrva.org. Now, before we begin today, I am absolutely positive that there's some of you that are on here right now that have not shared this broadcast yet. So guess what? If you know Pastor Jay, if you follow Pastor Jay, if you get down with Pastor Jay like that, do me this one favor, this one, one favor. Go ahead and press that share button so that somebody that could not uh, uh, get the word today would be able to get a word in their home right where they are. Do Pastor Jay that favor if, if you could. Amen? All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, we're going to get ready for the Word of God today. Again, if you have not shared this yet, please go ahead and share it. We do have um, a service on Wednesday night just as well. So go ahead and mark your calendars if you enjoy what you hear today. We're going to be here again on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. You can tune in, and I believe that's going to bless you as well. Now, let's get into our word today. I want you to go with me to Psalms 27. Psalms 27 is where we're going to go today. Psalms 27, verse number 1. Psalms 27, verse number 1. As you find the scripture, go ahead and type the, the scripture in your comments, Psalms 27 and 1. Let us know that you're reading along with us. Let us know uh, that you're there with us. All of you that are researching the text right now, go ahead and type it in the comments just so that we know we're all on one accord. Psalms 27 and 1. Here's what it says. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear. The Lord is the strength, underline that word strength, of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 
Shall I be afraid of this coronavirus? Shall I be afraid that the grocery stores are running out of food? Should I be afraid uh, that I don't have any hours on my job this week? Should I be afraid? It says, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come up against me to eat up my flesh. In other words, they come to kill me. They come to destroy me. The Bible says they stumbled and fell. In other words, they were not successful at their mission. Though an host should encamp against me, meaning I'm all surrounded, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Circle that word, confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and one thing or that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he Hide me. I want you to underline that as well. And he shall set me up upon a rock. Today, I want to teach uh, for the next few minutes from the subject, I need some space. I need some space. I want you to just type in the comment section, say, I need some personal space. <laughs> type in the comment section, I need some personal space. This week, because of the coronavirus pandemic, many cities and even some states have issued something called a quarantine. A quarantine is imposed isolation to prevent further spreading of a harmful disease. Somebody said, well, Pastor Jay, we've been watching news all week. Why don't you tell us something we don't already know? Well, what it happens when fear is the disease, faith becomes the quarantine. So anyone that may be around you right now that's speaking the language of fear and not speaking the language of faith, I need you to tell them, I need some space. See, they say the primary way to catch the coronavirus is to be within six feet of someone that releases something called respiratory droplets. They release these respiratory droplets through coughing or sneezing. And ultimately, you can inhale those droplets into your respiratory system, or you can touch a contaminated substance. Well, isn't that just like fear? Isn't that just like doubt? Have any of you ever been around a person and you had a conversation with them and they literally splatted their fear on you? Uh, and, and, and quotation marks underline their fear. They splatted their fear and their doubt on you. It's not your fear, it's, it's not your doubt, it's, it's, it's not your insecurity, but if you get around the wrong people, uh, they will literally splat <laughs> or spew their perspective on you. And if you're not careful, you'll allow it to get into your system. You'll allow it to get into your spirit. You will ingest it if you're not careful. You know, I probably sure you've talked to somebody this week they say well you know what you know what Pastor Jay well I heard 1500 people have died from this virus well guess what I heard 50,000 have recovered oh Pastor Jay I, I heard they're running out of bread at the grocery store I heard they're running out of essentials well guess what I heard in Matthew 6 and 25 take no thought for what you shall eat 
Oh, well, Pastor Jay, I, I heard they're cutting hours on the job. I heard they're, they're, they're laying off people left and right. Well, guess what? I got seed in the ground. And so I shall be confident that the Lord is going to take care of me. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so this morning, I just want to help somebody understand that you have to make sure in this season that you do not get contaminated by fear. You have to make sure that you don't get contaminated by fear and allow it to rest in your system. You have to make sure that you don't get contaminated by fear and allow it to overtake your spirit. You got to make sure that you don't get contaminated by fear and let it overtake your mind. Fear, fear, fear will cause you in this season to take on a disease that will cause you to be immobile will cause you to not move the way that God would have you to move. Fear, yes, my friends, it is a disease. And fear, my friends, can contaminate you. Fear, my friends, is something that is very deadly and very dangerous. And I need you to tell anybody around you that's not speaking faith in this season, I need some space. Yeah, give me six feet. Give me some room. Give me, give me some room because, because you're not talking the type of talk that I need to get through this season. You're not speaking the type of things that I need to get me where I need to go. You're, you're not cooperating with my spirit right now. Yes, I know you love me. Yes, I know you appreciate uh, uh, who I am in your life. But if your language is not cooperating with my inner man, then guess what? I need some space. So today, I want to talk about the stages of fear. And uh, you're going to have to give me some time here because I want to walk through this slow and I want to teach this so that you really, really understand it. I pray uh, that everybody that's watching right now, uh, that you're taking very, very good notes, okay? Take very, very good notes. Uh, it's very, very important to me very important to me that you take very, very good notes, okay? Uh, so we're going to start with the stages of fear, the stages of fear. The first stage of fear is what I call percolate, okay, percolate. And, and for all the, the early 2000s, I'm not talking about it's time for the percolate. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, percolate as in how uh, a controlled substance or a substance like coffee percolates and slowly drips through a filter. Uh, the first stage of fear is that it percolates. It percolates. Uh, uh, the definition is to cause a solvent or to cause a substance or to cause fear to pass through a permeable substance, okay, and it, especially for extracting a soluble constituent. In other words, another way to say it is to ooze or trickle through a permeable substance to trickle through slowly. Fear works slowly and gradually. It will trickle. It will ooze into your spirit. It doesn't come in like a flood. It's just slow and subtle seeds. We saw this with Eve in the garden. And many people identify that text and they say, wow, well, she was just in disobedience. Well, before she was in disobedience, she was in fear because the serpent came to her and began planting subtle seeds, just asking subtle questions, saying subtle things to create an insecurity, to create an uncertainty of her truth. Well, you know, 
God just doesn't want y'all to eat of that tree because he doesn't want y'all to become gods. He didn't want your eyes to become open. That's, that's like a cough or that's like a droplet being splattered on her. And she began ingesting it, receiving it. And she began thinking, well, wow, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what if, what if I can become like a God? What, what am I missing? What's, what's, What's out there that, that, that God doesn't want me to see? What's out there? I, what, what am I going to miss if I stay in this position? Droplets, fear droplets, fear droplets, just splatting fear on her. And before you know it, she was in full-blown fear, and she had to test out what was in her spirit now to percolate. First stage of fear is to percolate, slowly dripping, slowly dripping, slowly easing, oozing into your spirit. One conversation leads to a thought. That thought leads to a meditation. Meditation leads to an emotion. That emotion then leads to uh, an action or uh, a reaction. If this is blessing you so far, I want you to just type amen in the comment section. Just say amen, Pastor Jay. Talk back to me. I ain't got nobody here, so y'all got to talk to me in the comments. Amen? First stage of fear is to percolate. That's step number one. Y'all type that as well. Stage number two of fear. I'm telling y'all this is going to get good. Don't y'all tune out. Stay with me. Stage number two of fear is to percolate. First stage is to percolate. Second stage is to procrastinate. What do you mean, Pastor Jay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking to you. Yeah, you. You watching me right now that because of certain conversations you've had, certain conversations your cousin Nimden had with you, your friend, your bestie, your auntie, whoever, somebody spoke some fear. Somebody put some droplets of fear into your spirit, and now you're procrastinating on the thing that you know God told you to do. You know God said. You don't have, it's not something that you're, you're trying to figure out. You know without a shadow of a doubt that God said to move in this area, and you haven't moved yet. You're still procrastinating. Why are you procrastinating? Well, Pastor Jay is going to tell you today, it's fear. Fear has gripped you and has you in a posture that you think is safe. But guess what, children of God? You'll never be safe outside of the will of God. If God said go and you're still standing still, you are not safe because you are out of the will of God. You are out of position. You are out of compliance with heaven. And so therefore, the second stage of fear, how do you know, Pastor Jay, how do you know that, 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 that people who are in fear are procrastinating? How do you know that they're not just lazy? How do you know that they just don't have a good work ethic? Well, guess what? Why don't you have a good work ethic? Why, why don't you have a good work ethic? Why are you stagnant? Why are you not motivated? When the scripture says in 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy, I'm sorry, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, we always use that scripture very casually. But that scripture... When I get through this, when I get through these stages today, you're going to see how profound, how profound fear really is. And that's why I'm trying to get in front of you right now. Everybody that's connected to me, everybody that knows me, everybody that loves me, everybody that's, that's a part of my ministry, everybody that's part of Liberation Church, Liberation Nation, all of you, I need to get in front of you right now and let you know how serious this thing called fear is. God didn't just casually say that he has not given us the spirit of fear. There's a reason why he said he has not given you the spirit of fear. On the other side of fear, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's some serious price to pay. And so, procrastinate. First stage is to percolate, meaning fear is oozing into your system by droplets of fear.
confusion, conversation, doubt, okay, negativity, and it's seeping into your spirit. You need to tell them, I need some space. I need some space. I need some space because I need, if I'm going to execute crazy faith, I need some space right now. You're not, you're not, you're not helping me. You're not talking the right language for me. But if you're not careful and you let that fear percolate into your spirit, the next thing that you're going to see is you're going to start procrastinating. In areas that you should have moved in by now, you're going to still be stagnant. You're going to still be in the same posture. The third thing, the third thing that fear does is it paralyzes you. Stages of fear. Stage one, fear will percolate into your system. Stage two, it will cause you to procrastinate and not move when you should be moving toward what God has called you to. Number three, it will paralyze you. Paralyze you, paralyze you, paralyze you. Watch this, y'all. Uh, the University of Bristol in April 23 of 2014 released a study titled Neural Substrates Underlying Fear-Evoked Freezing. Okay? I'm no uh, a medical professional. I'm going to try to say this word the right way, but they call it the periaqueductal gray which is a cerebral link in your brain, which they've studied intensely to suggest that there is literally a part of your brain that is wired to freeze when you feel fear. It is literally, your brain is literally wired to freeze when you feel fear. And you have to literally push through it. You have to push through that natural emotion. And you may say, well, why in the world, Pastor Jay, would you study something like that? Why would you even understand something like this? Because the reality is, is that when fear paralyzes us and when it causes us to be stagnant, when it causes us to be still, when it causes us to not be mobile, what happens is, is that it allows us to be devoured. Now, I'm going to show you how this all makes sense. Now, um, I, so I begin studying some more and I begin to try to understand, well, why would God wire our brains to freeze with fear? Because we do believe, we believe, we believe that we are created by God. We, we you know, we, there's all type of theories and whatever, but we believe, we believe here that we are created by God. So God wired us. God created every blood vessel. He knows why it's there and he knows how it works. So I begin to study a little more and I try to understand why God would you, would you help us to cause our brains to freeze when we are approaching fear if it's not to our advantage. And I begin to learn that some mammals or most mammals actually survive in time of attack by playing dead. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Some mammals, when they feel fear, they're, they're wired to play dead. And they play dead to, watch this, to confuse, watch this, their enemies because their enemies, in some instances, will not eat anything that still got life in it. Oh, I'm sorry, will not eat anything that's, that's dead. They will only hunt something that has life still in it. I hope this is making sense to you. Hope this is making sense to you. Somebody just, just type amen if this, is, if, this is going, if this is starting to make sense. So then I said, okay, God, well, help me understand this because uh, 
some mammals are paralyzed by fear and it is an advantage to them because their adversary, watch this, their adversary, their enemy, uh, uh, will not eat them if they are already dead. Now, when we look at the text, if we go back to the text, we'll see, um, watch this, we'll see the text. It says, when a host should encamp against me. In other words, I'm surrounded by my enemies. Now, you may be able to imagine some type of, uh, 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 some type of mammal, maybe a a cougar or, or some type of smaller animal, maybe a coyote or something, that's surrounded by a much larger, a much larger creature. And it's many of them. Okay, they're surrounded. It's a host. And one of the strategies is that they will play dead to try to find safety. Well, here's what I learned about our enemy. Our enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So watch this. So the enemy, Satan, the devil, is not satisfied with you playing dead. He really wants to destroy you. So that's why this doesn't work. This, this model doesn't work for you because, because he's going to check your pulse. Y'all don't want to have church, even on online. He's going to check your post. If he doesn't finish the job, he's going to circle around you until he finishes the job. The enemy is not playing fair, okay? Yeah, there, there may be some, 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 some animals, some mammals in the wild kingdom that are not smart enough to understand that if you still got a pulse, that you still got life in you, but the enemy is not satisfied with that. If he knows you still have a pulse, he's going to come after you. Therefore, you can't play dead. You got to stand up and fight, baby. You got to stand up and fight. You got you to gotta get your adrenaline going. You got to start swinging and flailing. You got to do something, but you got to fight back. You can't just play dead in this one. Maybe y'all remember, y'all remember uh, your friend of yours in high school that couldn't fight. And, and they just, they, somebody come up messing with them, and they just... See, see, because sometimes you might not have the skill, but you got the will. Y- y'all don't, <laughs> you, 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 you might not have the technique, but you say, I'm not playing dead. I'm not, I'm not quitting. I'm, listen, uh, Bishop Younger said this one time, and it really blessed my spirit. He said, fear, listen, I hear you, but you're not going to keep me immobile. Depression, I, I feel you, but you're not going to keep me immobile. I don't care what comes against me. I may feel it. I may even understand why I'm feeling that way, but one thing's for sure, you will not keep me immobile. Hallelujah, somebody. If this is blessing you, come on, type amen. Come on, type hallelujah in the comments if this is blessing you. Somebody type in the comments, fear, you will not keep me immobile. Fear, you will not paralyze me. Fear, you will not keep me stagnant. Fear, you will not keep me in this bed. Fear, you will not keep these these shades drawn and my blinds closed. Fear, depression, you will not keep me immobile. Listen, if I can't go to work, I'm going to go outside and get some fresh air. I'm going to just go for a walk. You're not going to keep me immobile. Listen, I may be going through some things right now. My change might be a little strange and my money might be a little funny. But guess what? Fear, you will not keep me immobile. You will not keep me immobile. Y'all here. Point number four. Stage number four. This is blessing, y'all. Y'all press those hearts. And by God, if you have not shared this yet, please, people of God, share this broadcast. Stages of fear. Number one, fear percolates into your system. Number two, causes you to procrastinate. Number three, it will try to paralyze you. Number four, it will send you into panic. It will send you into panic. Percolate. Procrastinate. 
paralyzed, panic, 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 panic. You go into full-blown full blown panic mode. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this. Um, Y'all know what panic is. Um, it is anxiety to the max, okay? It is fear to the max. It is I'm no longer uh, in uh, my right mind. I am now shifting to a place where fear is now my personality. Fear is my, my character, which leads me to the fifth and final stage of fear. And here is why God has not given us the spirit of fear. Everything starts as a seed, ends, as a fruit, ends with fruit. The fruit of fear, the fifth stage of fear, the final stage of fear, the finality of fear, the conclusion of fear, the destruction point of the enemy is something called, watch this, pandemonium. Pandemonium. When, when fear has fully matured and manifested in the hearts and the minds of people, it produces something called pandemonium. Now, I'm about to rock y'all's whole world because we've been saying pandemic, pandemonium, all month long, and we don't even know what it means. Do you want to know what the word pandemonium means? And you can actually Google this, research it. Watch what the word pandemonium means. To get the word pandemonium, it is combined of a couple Greek roots. Pan meaning all. Watch this. Then the next word to get pandemonium, watch this, is demon. Y'all didn't even know that. With the Latin I-U-M ending, meaning, watch this, pandemonium is literally the place of all demons. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? Fact, fact check me. Fact check, Pastor Jay. Don't do it right now. Wait till I finish. <laughs> Wait till I finish. But, but, but in all honesty, pandemonium literally by definition means the place of all demons. Another definition says unrestrained order or unrestrained disorder, chaos, riotous, utter chaos, the abode of all the demons, hell. My God, I'm, talk, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you what the Bible says. I'm giving you what Webster's, what, 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 what Miriam's, what, what the, what the common. This is not even a spiritual definition. This is a secular de de definition, and the secular definition of pandemonium is literally hell. H E L L. If this country enters into pand pandemonium, we will be living literally in hell. Wow. When I read that, when I studied that, my mouth hit the floor. Pandemonium sounds, sounds a lot like pandemic. I got five minutes left. But listen, why, Pastor Jay? I, let me just move. Let me just move. Because this is, this is blowing my mind as I'm teaching it to you. Why does God say, he has not given us the spirit of fear. He has not given, he has not given, he has not given us the spirit of fear. Well, let's look at 1 Corinthians 14, 33. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Put it in the comments real quick. For the sake of time, I'm just going to keep going. 
And here's what it says. It says, for God is not the author of confusion. In other words, these two scriptures really are saying the same thing. It says he is not given. If you give something, you're the author of it. You are the originator. To give means to be the author. To, to create means to be the author, to give it. I have not given the spirit of fear. And why is that? Because I'm not the author of confusion. The reason why, watch this, the reason why uh, pandemonium, fear perfected. Fear perfected. This is good. Fear perfected is pandemonium. We start with the percolating, slow trickle. It's a slow trickle, just a slow, slow trickle, slow conversation, slow doubt. It's just, it's just, it's just manifesting slowly. Then it becomes something that causes you to procrastinate, okay? Slows you down. You don't want to move, okay? Then it goes to uh, uh, par paralysis, rather. It makes you paralyzed. You don't want to move. You don't want to do what God has called you to do. Then it takes you into panic. Once you get to into panic, if we don't correct it, by this stage, the next stage is called pandemonium, which literally, literally means, by definition, the place of all demons, hell. Pan meaning all, demon, I-U-M is the Latin ending that puts this word together that really says the place of all demons. Now, why is fear perfected pandemonium? Because we no longer can get any understanding. It's confusion. The danger of fear is utter confusion. You got pastors arguing with pastors. Y'all shouldn't be meeting and y'all shouldn't be shutting down the church. Y'all, y'all should, y'all shouldn't be doing that. Y'all shouldn't be meeting in the church. Confusion, right? People uh, going in the grocery stores buying. 50 things of sanitizer, 100 things of toilet paper. Confusion. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you need that much toilet paper? Why would you need that much sanitizer? You don't need that much. What's happened is you succumb to fear. Panic. Now pandemonium. No shade. Some of you, you felt like you had to do what's right by your family. God bless you. I understand. But the reality is you still don't need 50 things of toilet paper. You still don't. Sorry. I love you, but you don't. You don't need that much. Okay? Now, some people that really need it can't get it. Why? Because we're in pandemonium now. No understanding. We cannot get understanding. We cannot get on one accord. We cannot get on the same page. Is this making sense to anybody? Okay. Says Proverbs 4 and 7 says, see, the Bible tells us everything we need to know, y'all. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But watch this. In all you're getting, you got to get understanding. It's the most important thing. When we can no longer reason, when we can no longer get understanding, when we can no longer get on the same page, then guess what? We are operating in pandemonium, which means that is where the enemy has a field day. All the demons of hell can thrive in an environment where the people cannot get on one accord. All the demons in hell can have a field day when the people are in utter confusion and utter panic. It means we have aborted our trust in God. We have aborted our confidence in God. God promised us that he would hide us even in the midst of calamity, even in the midst of when everything's going crazy. The word of the Lord said and told us today that God would literally hide me. He's going to hide me. Somebody type that in the comments. He's going to hide me. And watch this. When we operate in fear and when we go into this pandemonium mode, then we have literally aborted God's ability to hide us. 
We're saying, God, I, I don't, I don't, I just don't trust you anymore. I'm on my own. And so now I'm in fear. Now I'm in utter chaos. Now I have no safety. I have no safety. I have no confidence. I have no understanding. Everything, everything is fluid. There's no order. There's no right. There's no wrong. There's no, there's no place of safety. Nothing safe. Y'all don't want, y'all may not understand how, how close we are to this. There's no place that's safe. When we, as people of God, should always feel we can hide under the shadow. We can hide under the shadow of the Almighty. It's getting to a point now where nowhere is safe. And if we accept that, and if we embrace that in our spirit, then we are not far from panic. And if we're not far from panic, we're not far from pandemonium. No place is safe. I can't even go to the bathroom. I can't even go. I can't, I can't stop and get something to eat. I can't go to the school. I can't pick my daughter up from school. We can't go to karate class. We can't go. Everything is now unsafe. I can't trust anything. It's a dangerous place, y'all. It's a dangerous place. And I urge you, I close. I urge you listening to me. Do not let fear set in. Okay? Those around you, those that you're listening to, those that are on the news, whatever, give me some space. I need some space. Because I have to keep my spirit clear. I have to keep my spirit clean. I have to keep my spirit focused on the fact that I have shelter, I have a hiding place, I have comfort. The Lord is my light. Doesn't matter how dark it gets, the Lord is my light. And because he's my light, whom shall I fear? What shall I fear? Because he's my light. He's the strength of my life. The economy is weak. People are weak. Things are weak. The infrastructure is weak. But the Lord is my strength. And he's the strength of my life. And because of that, whom shall I be afraid? The wicked, even my enemies and my foes, they came around me to eat up my flesh. They want to see me die. They want to see me fall. But guess what? They stumbled and fell. A host may encamp around me, but guess what? My heart's not going to fear. War should rise against me. I'm still going to be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, what's he going to do, y'all? Y'all type it in the comments. In the time of trouble, what's he going to do? In the time of trouble, what's he going to do? Shall I fear? Shall I panic? Shall I be paralyzed? Shall I allow fear to percolate in my spirit? In the time of trouble, what shall I do? Or what's he going to do? He's going to hide me.